the larger contracting firms. The, the question of um, putting your labor components together, your direct labor, your indirect labor, this teaches you how to do that, how to put all of the five components involved in the construction industry together in preparing your costing and preparing your bids for jobs so that at the end of the day you would come out with at least at least a situation where you don't lose money and i say at least because that is what this does this this makes sure that if you work this program well there's no chance you're going to lose money the workshop will be held at the Koyaba Beach Resort from November 29 to December 2nd, beginning at 9 a.m. each day. Bain says it will help participants to apply the right techniques so they will not continue to lose money. The, the labor aspect, in, even in the labor aspect of it, most contractors would just simply um, look at what they would pay a guy to do a day's job and look at what NIS they have to pay and that's it. But there are many other factors that go into costing labor that would now put you at a position where your charge out costs would be much more than just the NIS and the day's wage. Yeah. So all of these things would have to be taken into consideration. The, the business aspect of it in that the small contractor would have a business, regardless of how small it is a business. Mm. You have a vehicle to run you have probably a staff, a small staff to pay, maybe two persons, but they still have to get paid. Mm -hmm. So every job you're doing, there's a certain cost to the business to do that job. The person who is making up salaries at the end of the week should at some way be paid in part from those jobs. But most, again, small business um, people don't take these factors into consideration and so you find at the end of the day you 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 bid a price that doesn't cover all of this all your 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 business overhead is that prevalent in job Grenada? overhead Still? it is prevalent in Grenada. devon britain who is also attached to the basic needs trust fund hopes that upon completion participants will be comfortable enough to bid for cdb funded bntf projects in bntf over the years what we realize is that when we put it up bid there or when we put it, when there is a bid for a contract, we realize that a lot of persons either the bid too high or the bid too low. And then that creates problem. You know, this is why on doing this workshop, we thought, let us bring it here so the persons who, the contractors who interact with BNTF, they could get a chance to be an um, Mr. BNTF, equal playing field. Yeah. You know, and um, also persons on the other side who do not have direct interaction with BNTF has a chance to be part of that as well. Of that process. Because once you become, once you start to use that tool, and you become confident in yourself that you, you, your business is working the way you want it, um, then you feel con comfortable that you could bid for any one of BNTF projects. Projects. You're watching the GIS News Hour. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back. The annual schools gardening competition is well on its way with schools across the island preparing their gardens for judging, each hoping to outshine the other for the top prize. The competition is not only teaching students about agriculture, but also bringing focus to other lessons. Public Relations Officer at the Ministry of Education, Wendy Chateau, reports. Providing students with a hands-on approach to agricultural science is one of the objectives of the school's gardening competition run annually by the Agricultural Science Division within the Curriculum Unit at the Ministry of Education. It provides the students with practical experience of what is taught in the classroom. One of the schools participating in this year's competition is the St. David R.C. School, whose 4-H club is responsible for the garden. Teacher in charge of the club is Mr. Peter Klein. He pointed out that they recently reaped and sold 26 pounds of lettuce to the supermarket, providing the students with a taste of agribusiness and some practical mathematics. 
um, the, the, the agribusiness aspect of it is, is a very good thing because they're learning to do business at the same time. Not seeing agriculture as a traditional um, dirty in your hand thing, but it's something that they can make um, money out of. Um, and, and they can go to the young farmers to help to develop the, the agriculture sector of the country. They would have to have an organized approach whereby you have to monitor the time the crop was, was planted, um, the amount of pounds or um, whatever produce that is sold and so on. So, you know, they have to do the addition and so on and so forth. So it enhances the mathematical aspect. The school won the prize for best garden in their district in the last competition and is hoping for similar results this time around. Last year, when we participated in the um, crop competition, we were able to win the best forage crops among the um, forage crops in St. David's. You know, so um, we have high expectations, and it's, it's 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 something that we want to keep. You know, so we're working hard uh, towards um, keeping that that um, trophy that we last year. One of the foragers told us his work in the garden helps him better understand the theoretical aspect of the subject. I learn a lot about the crops and everything and it helps me with the tests. It helps me about to learn more about agriculture, everything about agriculture, all the stages and everything. According to Mr. Klein, the practical aspect of the subject always serves to enhance the classroom sessions. The practical approach is always the better approach because when they have the hands-on activities where they can see what they're doing, then it, it, it helps to enhance the, the theoretical aspect of our teaching. The competition runs this year from September until January 2011 and is being judged in three categories. The last competition was won by St. Andrew RC in Category A and Boca Secondary in Category B. I'm Wendy Chateau of the Public Relations Unit, Ministry of Education and Human Resource. Stigma and discrimination continues to be a major hindrance for people living with HIV and AIDS. That is the concern of Peace Corps worker Lauren Orlando, who is currently attached to Hope Pals Network. Hope Pals is a foundation that seeks the interest of those living with HIV AIDS. Ms. Orlando says they will begin a chronic illness week of prayer from Saturday, which will coincide with the observance of World AIDS Day. She wants people to understand that HIV can affect anyone at any time. HIV waits for no one and it doesn't have a face, right. it doesn't have a gender, it doesn't have a race. Right. So in that sense it, it includes everyone. Right. And I think um, we've reached a point when we do need to talk about prevention, we do need to talk about um, protecting ourselves, but we also need to talk about go beyond that and say what can we what can we look at for persons that are HIV positive and treat them just like every other person because they are every, uh, every other person. Ms. Olanda says if people view those living with the disease as normal people, life will become much easier for them. Stigma and discrimination, she adds, must be eliminated. It's declining, but it's not declining as much as it needs to. And this year's um, World AIDS Day theme is universal access and human rights, which means that everyone um, should have access and everyone needs to have hu human rights granted. And instead of looking, I think some people say, well, this is my right because I'm a woman, or this is my right because I'm disabled, or this is my right because I'm HIV positive. We need to, I think, look at it more as this is my right because I'm a human. And I have these rights from the United Nations, from the state of Grenada, and what have you. And once you look at it at a human level, rather than specify it in a different function, then it, then it makes it a lot easier for, for those rights to be granted. And once you realize that the next human being, whether you care for them or not, whether you agree with them or not on their views, their values, their beliefs, that they're another human being, then, it's, then it takes it to a, a simpler level instead of, you know, using stigma and discrimination to, to make them separate from yourself. 
in regional developments. Jamaica has met end of September targets on the an IMF loan arrangement, but spending overruns are a risk, the fund said following emission to Jamaica. The IMF says Jamaica's economic growth was revised downward for the fiscal year 2010 to 2011, which it called a worrisome trend given high unemployment and poverty rates. Jamaica had previously said spending would increase because of hurricane damage to the country. The World Health Organization says countries across the globe need to improve the financing of their health systems in order to ensure that as many as people as possible have access to health care. The WHO says underfunding aging populations and an increase in chronic diseases are stretching health services, which it says are already far from universal. In its new report, the organization outlines several ways in which countries should consider improving funding for health, including levying higher taxes on tobacco or foreign exchange transactions or raising value added tax. That's going to do it for news. Sports is next with Trevor Thwaites. Stay with us. Welcome back. Before we go, here's a recap of the stories making the headline. Senior government minister says there's much to do to ensure more opportunities for people. Newly appointed junior minister resigns and road work on the carnage expected to be completed this week. These plus other stories made it in the news. On behalf of the entire team here at the Government Information Service, I am Abigail McIntyre. Thank you for joining us.